a few other places. You went to Birmingham. Um, how did you able to? Um, what was your mission? Put it that way into interacting with the African diaspora because there is there is a thing of what the African diaspora are doing and what the African people are doing. But in able to infusing them together, what kind of things would you say that you are trying to put forward or trying to do while you're going on your travels? Yeah, actually, at, at this point, you remember the last year um, mm -hmm. was a was a four hundred years of slavery, mm -hmm. and we the president of Ghana instituted the royal return. Okay, the royal return. Mm -hmm. is for uh, is for people of the diaspora to visit africa because the information given about africa indicates that is a very jungle that nobody would like to go and i tell you which is an which is a wrong picture the painting about africa africa is not like that so mm -hmm. now the pink the picture has been painted to a point that even the people in the diaspora don't want to interact with Africa. Mm -hmm. Some are like corruption in Africa, every time corruption. But when we talk about the West, there's a lot, a lot of corruption going on that you think is in Africa. Is the West who make Africa corrupt? We should know that. Mm -hmm. You know? So now, talking about bringing people from the diaspora to link with Africa in terms of commerce, in terms of agriculture, in terms of technology, in terms of development as a whole. You know, we have to, the president of Ghana Institute, the return, so that people at the, uh, at the diaspora will travel to Africa and see for themselves what is going on there. And there they will make their own decision whether to collaborate with Africa and change things happening in Africa. Mm -hmm. So most of my travels has been that. We even install uh, one of the leading businessmen into the Okanse family as a developmental mm -hmm. king in Africa last year. And we are, if not of the vi uh, coronavirus, we are to do a lot with most superstars in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This okay. year, but we might move it to next year. Okay, so I'm going to introduce um, another person that's just come in, oh. and he's he's galvanizing the African diaspora. Um, please introduce yourself, my brother. Uh, Kwaba, Your Majesty, and uh, Kwaba. Uh, <laughs> so I am Dino Senior, the founder of ADPAC, which is the African Diaspora Political Action Committee. Okay. We are a national organization who are galvanized to plug into the ADDI and the African Diaspora region and work with dignitaries, chiefs, and national directors such as yourself. Mm -hmm. What we do is bring all of the technology people together Mm -hmm. So we have a cryptocurrency mm -hmm. on its own blockchain that can be delivered throughout the continent mm -hmm. and through throughout the diaspora, mm -hmm. which actually ring fences our economic security, which mm -hmm. we don't have currently mm -hmm. because our currencies are pegged to European commodities that mm -hmm. can be manipulated by the financial money makers at mm -hmm. the moment. Mm -hmm. as has been the case when they crash our economies. Mm -hmm. So what we are also is a lobbying and advocacy organization in the mm -hmm. vein of APAC, mm -hmm. the US-Israeli lobby, mm -hmm. however, for the African diaspora. Now, more than just being a national organization, our intention is to increase intra-African trade mm -hmm. through the entire diaspora, Mm -hmm. So in terms of what we seek to bring to the continent, what we want to do is deliver blockchain technology on mm -hmm. the continent mm -hmm. where we have the expertise to deliver. Mm -hmm. And also all of the digital tools mm -hmm. such as a digital ID, which we mm -hmm. already have irrespective mm -hmm. of whether we acknowledge it or not. It's just not owned by us. Mm -hmm. So 
a digital ID on our own blockchain, which is mm -hmm. literally why I'm late. And my apologies, incidentally, no, just okay. because I just came off of a Zoom call with mm -hmm. my co colleague Daryl Speaks from mm -hmm. Sable Ascent Coin and my brother Otis, mm -hmm. who's my counterpart in the UK. Okay. Where we were talking about security of the coin delivery and the listing in the various exchanges it is in now and mm -hmm. along with Visa mm -hmm. and the rollout for adoption by businesses mm -hmm. and then you get the exponential adoption of consumers and then we know once we get the consumers we get the exponential adoption on the continent mm -hmm. because of the remittances mm -hmm. so now via the remittances we remove the middlemen Mm -hmm. the um, money transfer people mm -hmm. because we have the ability to do that just by transferring from wallet to wallet. Mm -hmm. So we remove the absorbent fees mm -hmm. that they charge us for mm -hmm. the continent and the mm -hmm. Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And we, we simplify the process, but also in having the blockchain and being able to establish digital IDs, what we do is establish our ability to act as sovereigns globally where we can't be turned off by Europeans mm -hmm. and the masters of the universe. Mm -hmm. In effect, we become uh, custodians, mm -hmm. African custodians mm -hmm. in the positions of the masters of the universe mm -hmm. to protect our African sovereignty mm -hmm. and make us a globally protected people, which mm -hmm. at current we're not. We're the easiest people to target, as we've mm. seen with what the Chinese have done. That's true. And to be fair, Indians and everybody else. Um, just before in closing, I'll say that where world economists have come to the hypothesis that half of the planet will be not only African, but Africans under the age of 25 by 2050, what we desire to do is bring sustainable employment to the continent mm -hmm. and we invite those to be the digital businesses. Mm -hmm. So one of our objectives is to build out a, a, an African operating system for mobile mm -hmm. phones, mm -hmm. just as China did, mm -hmm. um, which will go across mobile devices and our desktop computers and laptops. Mm -hmm. What that does also in enacting with the blockchain is deliver us communication and economic security. Mm -hmm. It provides potential of limitless employment mm -hmm. for African diasporans who are producing apps mm -hmm. to engage with that operating system at the same mm -hmm. time. Now, what we want to do is establish the tech universities on the continent. Mm -hmm. My personal passion is starting with Ghana mm -hmm. uh, so that we are training in the correct way Mm -hmm. to engage with those platforms mm -hmm. and create employment at the correct levels mm -hmm. that goes across every single industry, mm -hmm. including education mm -hmm. and every other trade. In a nutshell, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's laudable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, as we're, we're talking about the African diaspora and that's the kind of the business aspect of, of, of things as well. Um, um, I was, as I was speaking to you earlier and we were talking about the children mm -hmm. and, and how we can able to engage both sides of the waters of our children to able to engage by having some form of self-development, which as I, as I told you before, what we call Manhood Academy and Womanhood Academy into mm -hmm creating a an exchange program for the youth in 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 able to engage with you in the forms of the children in Ghana able to come to the to the children in 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 the UK and the UK children coming to Ghana and vice versa in the states and around the world um uh, what i was trying to do is to to create that kind of exchange program into creating and giving them that history as well as working as a form of the system or, uh, as in forms of business and to keep the the interrelationship between both but from asking from you is what is what kind of things are you doing to able to to bring in that that the two back together yeah as a matter of fact um what 
what we are trying to do, like Dean said, what, what we are trying to do now mm-hmm. is to build an entrepreneurial development center. Mm-hmm. Okay. To train kids, the youth, for the future. Mm-hmm. And also build a leadership training center for Africa to recruit the best brains to come mm-hmm. and study leadership in, Af- in, in Ghana, regardless of where you are, so far as you are a black person. And we, we, we're talking about the best brains all over the continent to have like a master's and doctorate program in leadership. And we will liaise with the presidents, individual presidents of the continent, so that this key, uh, these young people, when they go back, they put them into government. Because the ph- philosophies of Marcus Gavi, Kwame Nkuma, Heli Selassie, mm-hmm. Bob Marley, yeah. all those philosophies have to be steady. Then we inculcate it in our African culture. So that, our, so that the African, uh, the Africanism that we are losing will come back. Because far, are you guys there? Yeah. We're yes, there. sir. Yes. Far, long before the European scale, we had institutions institutions that even our institutions when you sit down now to analyze them since i came to the throne i started analyzing our institutions they are so rich our forms of government talk about the forms of government the Ga- the Ga- the Ghanaians have the yorubas have the south africans we have real institutions that now we've, because of democracy and all those things we we've, we've pushed them to the background but my dream is if we will have an institution that will train the youth for leadership and push them into governments in the future for Africa to unite, it will not be difficult because we need ideology push and let them study the black history, who we are. You know, the problem with us, black people, is that especially in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. It's like a tree without a tree without roots. Mm -hmm. And when there is a tree without roots, the tree will never flourish. So it's time we go back to our roots to plant our trees. Then the black the black man will flourish. Mm. Yes. So now like uh, like Dean was saying, uh, those are the technologies we need now in Africa. In an entrepreneurial development center that will start teaching them, the youth, how to take care of our, how we bring all this currency together. And now is a time for us to bring governments of Africa together in summits to talk about new economic system for Africa new agricultural system for Africa, new constitutional system for Africa. Those are the things we should be talking about now because all the ones we've tried has failed us. Absolutely. So now we have to come together and organize seminars and bring the the learned people together and talk to them how we can change the mindset of the African. Thank you. 110%, 110%, sir. Mm. So, your, your Majesty, what I would say to you is that um, we also have an organization which is around economics, um, employment, and entrepreneurial training called Access UK, mm-hmm. which was founded by my brother Nana Ajiman. Mm-hmm. Um, his father passed very recently. So, in delivering our leadership training, which we have a program and we have funded leadership programs, mm-hmm. even in the United Kingdom, mm-hmm. we have something for young men. Mm-hmm. Once they finished the rites of passage mm-hmm. at 18, mm-hmm. which is 18 to 24, called the Manage Program, mm-hmm. which is 
a very structured leadership program mm -hmm. to create pathways into different industries mm -hmm. where they will receive mentors afterwards, but also where they would enter a society which is a garden society where you have the alumni and brotherhood from that Gavi society mm -hmm. who will help each other as mm -hmm. units of 10 mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Now, we want to work very closely with Terry and yourself, mm -hmm. Access UK and ADPAC mm -hmm. to actually place this, put this international exchange in place, mm -hmm. which is a very powerful leadership exchange mm -hmm. because not only do you have the Africans coming here mm -hmm. and those from Holland, Germany, mm -hmm. France, Sweden, it becomes a complete international exchange, mm -hmm. but also around the curriculum mm -hmm. of delivery leadership mm -hmm. that is being delivered as well. Mm -hmm. So we already have a... I think he's, he's frozen for a bit. A bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, um, I'll speak on, the, on, on some of Funded that. Funded pro... Okay, he's back. Is he back? Um, okay, when he comes back. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, in the forms of the Manhood Academy and, and, and what we do with what he does is that we, we start from the eight-year-olds mm -hmm. and able to grow from the eight-year-olds to the teens. Are you there, Dean? Yes, sir. Okay, because you, you was cutting in and out. So finish. No, I saw it. I froze. Yeah. Yeah. So... Just, just very quickly to pick up from Terry's point. Mm -hmm. Rites of passage should be universally adopted. That's right. You froze the game. <laughs> by all, all left. Um, I think, and that was the end of tax year. Mm. Or freezing. Because somebody had... had around engagement stop what is freezing that I think you have to get into a position Dean our community gives us I can't um, if me talk and you let me know when I'm freezing yeah, it gives us a high cultural self esteem and the best potential to establish an African lens. We know that leadership are sent overseas to develop a European mm -hmm. lens and then come home and have no apathy for their own mm -hmm. people. So, immediately, as you have a man who is seeking to steal from his nation, mm -hmm. plant that wealth in mm -hmm. Europe, which can be frozen and confiscated with no accountability to those who confiscate and take that money is it's become a ridiculous and un you're frozen again will he be back Yes, family, um, if you can please share, like, and subscribe. This is an important day, a big day. Um, make sure you share this link to everybody so that they can hear and listen to what is happening. Um, Dean, you're just, you're, you're freezing quite a bit. Um, if you can speak, try and see if you can speak again. Uh, it's freezing again. It's freezing again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here we're back. Um, yeah, so going back into the dialogue and understanding the the Manhood Academy, um, where we're looking for um, patrons and ambassadors and people to represent the Manhood Academy in the fact that whatever we, we push the narrative of the kings and queens, as well as we push even some of the celebrities or scholars into being the, the mothers and the fathers of the foundation of it so that it gives us the, the credibility of, of drawing in the children and, and making sure that the, the, the children get the right self-development 
so that we're able to push them forward. So by opening up the exchange program across Africa in forms of opening up an, an academy or doing an academy program in, in, in a village or in a city, it gives the people to have in the exchange. And then at the same time, it brings volunteers. So if the children and the, and the volunteers come, they can even help within the, the villages or the community. So they build a family relationship amongst each other. So if we're able to do that and able to put that even in the States, we put that in the Caribbean, we put that in South America, we put that in, in Europe and we put that in Africa, then we're able to have that network back and forth with different different people in different tribes. And then the, the African diaspora, we're now able to have a better understanding and African people will have a better understanding of each other in that forms of bonding. Yeah, um, yeah, like uh, what you're saying is very true. And um, it has something to do with the um, return of the royals. Mm -hmm. Actually, what we're trying to do before the COVID-19 uh, came in was tr trying to bring people from the diaspora and give them families in Africa. Somewhere that anytime they come to Africa, they can go as their family, associate them with those families. Even those who want citizenship in Ghana want to do that. And we, we're starting in Ghana so we can spread it to Nigeria and all other countries in mm. Africa. You understand? So we are speaking the same language and I want us to synage and bring our, pull our resources together and mm. do that. Because that will help us to change, to bring people from the diaspora to know what is really happening in Africa and mm. not the stories they tell about kangaroos and lions roaming everywhere <laughs> now. That's not it. <laughs> yes. Um, and and, and um, in, in your experiences with, okay, your experiences between the, the, the government and the 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 the, the 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 royal families. What what kind of experiences have you got from the government? Because as we know, we we were colonized by by the Europeans, and the the they've given us certain ways of de their ways, and which we've applied within our government system, which it's not really on the on the royal side of things because we don't deal things the way they do. What are the, the, the hurdles or the difficulties that you have found since you've been been crowned as king? Yeah, I mean the hot the we we have a lot of hurdles. Yeah. But um I believe that uh, it takes one person to change a civilization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, we always, I always say something, that the politicians were not there when they came to colonize us. When they came to, when they took uh, our brothers and sisters from us, they ripped them from us. We, the royals, we were there when all these things happened. Mm -hmm. And there is an adage in Africa that where the place you climb the tree from to the top, that, that same place, when you are descending, you pass the same place. So I think it's now for the royals to be involved in changing things because the political systems the West brought to us has never helped us. It has never worked. It has failed us woefully. And now I'm thinking, of we talking, collaborating with the various governments and putting the royals into the affairs of the African Union to lobby and talk about Africa development and African unity. So I, it's, it's an uphill battle that we're going to fight together because the interests behind is too, is too great. But we have to do it. We have to change the course of civilization because so far it has never helped the Africans. It has never helped mm -hmm. us. So I have been talking to people 
that matters that the royals the royals have to be placed in the political system to talk about these exchanges without bias you know so that africa will start talking about unity because like uh, dean was saying we need we need a currency that we use as a continental currency because our currencies as individual states are worthless mm -hmm. you know so this is the time for us to create something that we can depend on to change this old system we have mm -hmm. um dean are you back now uh you might be able to hear my voice i yeah, can see that my camera isn't showing in any case, I will make a contribution in any way that I can. Yeah. Um, what you're saying is completely accurate. Look, Ambassador Arakana has been saying exactly the same thing. Thank you. There are many minds now, and there is a will within the diaspora of, of people who've worked in corporate industry, project managers, technical people, to come together and work on singular projects for a singular successful outcome. Now, what we understand is that we're all bound by the same potential fate. Racism precludes us from taking full part in any of the societies that we live. Exactly. Now there's economic racism that takes part from the banks where we are demonized to a degree and there is a burden of proof put upon us even to move our own funds, which is ridiculous. We don't have any economic security. It's also very hard for us to set up trade relationships with the continent because then there's even further demonization through racism in that taking part. So in the first instance, we have developed out the technology and is now just about the adoption of said technology and currency for us to take on board. There is that skepticism amongst us that whenever Africans produce something, it must be inferior. Now, with the coin that we have and the ability to deliver a, a blockchain on the continent, which would enable us to even supersede where Western countries are currently in having to deliver out 6G and start again from scratch, Britain is starting again from scratch with its telecommunications, which is why we are all inside and they call it essential work that workmen are building out G G5 infrastructures right now. Now, if we skip right to the blockchain, our communication systems will far exceed what even they have in the West right now. And we have the ability to do that based on limited um delivery programs that are in the continent at the moment. And especially where corrupt leadership have given cartels to singular companies like AT&T mm -hmm. and the fact that you would have only had visa operating on the ground in the country legally, it doesn't protect choice. There's no democratic process. And what we want to do is just circumvent all of these restrictions that have been created by ineffective leadership and deliver out exactly what people will, what pe people deserve based on a blue ocean strategy of interconnecting not only the entire continent of 1.3 billion people, but the entire diaspora of 1.5 billion people digitally being able to deliver out a digital ID, which is protected, irrespective of what Western companies like Google and Facebook seek to do, in shutting us down and our voices internationally. Once we have our own structures, our own operating system, all we require is the delivery partners on the ground. So we have the digital systems, we have leadership programs, even in terms of bringing the rights of passage, like Terry said, and you to um, a socioeconomic platform like the London School of Economics, Mm -hmm. We have um, an econ a diaspora and economic season mm -hmm. that we're going to deliver at the London School of Economics. Mm -hmm. And we're quite to invite you down mm -hmm. to speak on that podium mm -hmm. in terms of how the continent wishes to 
liaise with the diaspora mm -hmm. and bring that expertise home. Mm -hmm. A reverse brain drain, which has been a long time in coming, mm -hmm. because we know that opportunities that are presented, which are economic and social in their remit, mm -hmm. far exceed what we're capable of doing in the West. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 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 in 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 the things that, like, for instance, um, King, um, the things that you're doing in the states. What kind of things are you doing within within that within the community of um, United States itself? Yeah, in the United States now, what we are working on seriously is to get um, people that the movers and shakers to Africa, you know, put them into families mm -hmm. that they can effect change in those families. So mm -hmm. that's what we are work, working on now. On, uh, now. Though the Royal Returns was last year, 400 years, mm -hmm. which, which we call the Providential Time Identity. <laughs> 40, Mohammed, 40 days and 40 nights. No, <laughs> the number mm -hmm. four, Jesus Christ, 40 days and 40 nights. And now the Black, we are 400 years, the number four. So this is the time for us. To effect change in history. So, in a nutshell, from now on onwards, the royal returns continues, and it will continue bringing people from the diaspora, planting them into various African families, and for so that the people in the diaspora will know how Africa is and how Africa operates, and the energies and the good things they have in the diaspora will be moved into the African system. And with that, we can effect the necessary change, changes we are yes. looking for, yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, so um, you know, okay, there's a lot of people out here that are, are, are asking this question in that, if they go to Ghana, what what is in place for them to able to bring their creativity or their business or whatever contributions? Because you know, as the African system is, some people they're very hungry. They see somebody with money, they 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 try to capitalize on them, and not realizing what's going on. So then it leaves someone that's coming back home with a bad taste. What kind of things can we say we can put in place for that not to able to happen? Yes, uh, as we are talking now, um, we we are now about to set the organizations. In we are starting from Ghana, then we spread it all over Africa. These organizations, which I I ask you guys to be part of, that receives people from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. and, you know, program them into the system, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll have laid down regulations that telling the people that come in not to do things haphazard, but they have to pass through the organization mm -hmm. so that nobody will be bent and have a bad feeling. Yes. So with time, when they come to know the people, then they can take charge of themselves. But initially, we have to guide them into the African system. Beautiful. So, you see, now we are talking about delivering out systems. Mm -hmm. And systems must be cultural in their remit because we're all obligated to uphold, promote, and preserve our culture, mm -hmm. or we're nothing. Mm -hmm. And there are many ideas about people coming from the outside and creating these gated communities with walls um, as high as Donald Trump perceives you have between Mexico and the States. That's and it's the right. wrong idea. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about the integration mm -hmm. and bringing our skill sets. Mm -hmm. So what you are saying brings me to the mindset of two sets of colleagues mm -hmm. who, one, are in an African country which just based on security, mm -hmm. um, I can't divulge Mm -hmm. because we understand that we have adversaries that can scupper the progress of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But they, they have actually established a sovereign jurisdiction 
within this country where they are delivering out a town hall which has a trust not only for sovereigns as people but the trust ha- is managing the mineral rights mm-hmm. of many chieftains and kings in this particular country mm-hmm. now what that has created is a combined wealth based on the geological studies mm-hmm. is not necessary to rape the ground anymore because the wealth is in within the geological studies mm-hmm. now all they do is create a bond through their bank and then release the liquidity of that mm-hmm. through the cryptocurrency mm-hmm. so now just like the yiddish swift system mm-hmm. they are producing money from thin air mm-hmm. now these are the kind of people that we want to bring together with those who can deliver it on the ground in ghana mm-hmm. so that we have these differences from there exactly as they do so that we don't have to rape the ground so that we don't have to exploit the people but we can experience the wealth of our true assets the gold the diamonds the bauxite mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the timber and everything else mm-hmm. which underpins the value of the trust which is released for a bond and made in liquidity through the coin mm-hmm. so those are definitely conversations that we want to have That's and right. since you're in the states mm-hmm. my brother Daryl speaks the mm-hmm. CEO of mm-hmm. Stable Ascent Coin mm-hmm. has just last week got a contract with the National Black Chambers of Commerce in the states mm-hmm. which represents over a million businesses in the mm-hmm. United States okay. so there are a lot of shortcuts that have been taken mm-hmm. in plugging directly into work that's been done already Mm-hmm. So it's a very fortuitous time for all of us mm-hmm. that we're connected by our brother our own secret service Mr mm-hmm. Terry Ricks mm-hmm. that brings us together on a regular basis mm-hmm. to plug into these organizations mm-hmm. because again what you can do mm-hmm. is in creating those genuine digital identity mm-hmm. you can utilize a system that exists and mm-hmm. plug and play tomorrow mm-hmm. and immediately you are um hitting the ground running Mm-hmm. and then introducing the cultural mm-hmm. remit mm-hmm. we actually desire and require to move mm-hmm. forward mm-hmm. because we don't have it um and then what you do starts to impact events that we have here mm-hmm. it starts to impact the lens that we have here and that is the most important thing because we are going through the greatest global reset that has ever happened in the history of mankind that's true now if we aren't resetting as africans we are missing the trick if we are sitting at home and waiting for them to say it's okay to come outside now and engage with our system we're going to enter that system which is what they reset it for mm-hmm. which is serfs and landowners mm-hmm. now we aren't the landowners in the equation we're the serfs mm-hmm. based mm-hmm. on who we are mm-hmm. if we desire to remain sovereign mm-hmm. in global police state legislation mm-hmm. which has been adopted by all western nations mm-hmm. with police drones with facial recognition software mm-hmm. so that we've now in a dystopian future and a police state whether we are aware or not mm-hmm. we can't protect ourselves mm-hmm. so it is a merging of spirit mm-hmm. culture mm-hmm. technology and mm-hmm. action mm-hmm. in africa has always needed to a degree for kilmanga to return home but with empathy mm-hmm. and the love of these people to protect mm-hmm. these people and hold out hand in hand yes. this is where we find ourselves now or this is the opportunity that presents itself now mm-hmm. okay great so our role isn't necessarily to come and ask what you can do for us but how we can work hand in hand and make each other safe That's what it's like i want to see it we give up as much as we are willing to risk mm-hmm. so as two men on a cliff's face mm-hmm. supported by one rope and the equal distribution of weight mm-hmm. it behooves both of us to behave ourselves because if one lets go of the rope mm-hmm. we both have. that's and good. at this stage we understand that china russia the united kingdom the us and everybody else is waiting to carve up the cake mm-hmm. but if we 
can establish these infrastructures mm -hmm. based on this unique opportunity that we're mm -hmm. presented with, mm -hmm. Africa will become the superpower that China wished they were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is nothing to limit us making drone technology to protect mm -hmm. our borders. Mm -hmm. There is nothing uh, precluding us from creating magnetic pulse weapons that could take out a whole uh, air base, mm -hmm. making them completely useless. Mm -hmm. So when we think in these innovative ways and we start to build out the systems based on the collaboration of the diaspora in the West, Mm -hmm. and those in the country, mm -hmm. nobody has a greater potential for success than us. That's true. And also we understand that those intelligence services that are everywhere else need to be on the continent in a collected and joined up way. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that protect us, mm -hmm. not relying on other people's eyes in the sky, mm -hmm. but on our own. That's not right. relying on other people's intelligence or military peacekeeping forces, but on our own. Mm -hmm. We have no end of manpower. So we don't need anybody else's military services on the ground. Mm -hmm. We need to develop our military manufacturing capabilities mm -hmm. on the ground. So the potential of our military can actually protect our borders That's from right. enemies internal and external. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so with this said, uh, I think um, very soon we should we should start planning a leadership and an economic summit in one of the uh -huh. African countries to I pull concur. yeah to pull most of the leaders on economics presidents together so we can talk definitely. So and saying that, and in somebody like yourself creating the platform, a conversation I just came off the phone with my brotherhood earlier was about quantifying the number that it would take mm -hmm. to transport Africans out of abject poverty. Now, we look at it in this way, that China, over the course of 20 years, mm -hmm. transferred 350 million people Mm -hmm. out of abject poverty into middle class that's right and 300 million people mm -hmm. out of abject poverty into working poverty now if we establish the same models for ourselves then we start thinking about the rollout of that remit and put it into milestones and project delivery and then we're identifying the personnel that need to come in all of the various organizations what resources we have on the ground in terms of assets that the earth produces, how we can create liquidity out of them um, in the simplest forms and just bring the greatest minds to the table to then design that project and the rollout of that project in the most efficient way in the shortest period of time. Yeah, that's true. You see, what, the models are there. Terry, you're on mute. I can hear you. Uh, yeah, okay. You see, there are some of the models there that, as you are saying, we can pick things from it. You know, mm -hmm. when, when Don Champagne was leading China, and then China was extremely communist, he pushed, he, he pushed for China becoming a capital socialist state. Okay? And with that, that has transformed China within a short mm -hmm. time. Not even 100 years. Yeah. Within a short time. And in China, there is one elite university, like we are talking about the Leadership Training Center for Africa. There's an elite university that recruits all the best brains there. And yeah. when, after training them, they put them into governments. You know? So you've been, ideologically, you've been trained, you've been polished to lead. Yes. If your leadership is in engineering, they train you. They train you as an you are you are trained already as an engineer, but they put leadership skills to the engineering. If you are an economist, they train you as an economist, but for you to lead the economist, you know, those are some of the things we have to inculcate in Africa. Mm -hmm. Then when we inculcate things in Africa like that, 
you see the mindset will start changing. And what we need seriously in Africa is TV, television, yes, television television stations that we can control, yes. and radio stations, yes, a cable network that will give messages, trying to change the mindset. You know, going into past histories of Africa that has been neglected, that has been suppressed. We have to bring them Absolutely. out so that so the people will know that the black people around the world will know that we are not inferior after all. All these things they are enjoying was created by us. So why don't why can't we take leadership of this thing? Let's come out of that dark age and take leadership. Black people are not inferior. We are very intelligent not people. Too. We are very intelligent people. And we have to come up. So I really appreciate your initiative, guys. Absolutely. And, and yours let's equally. Work, yeah, let's work together. We'll, we, we'll, we'll get I, I, there. As I like to say, we, we're already delivery partners. It just hasn't happened yet. That's because right. Because as we talk across all of the areas, media, we have the TV platforms. Mm -hmm. um, we have the ability to build 4K studios. Mm -hmm. I have a delivery partner that I will speak to you offline. Mm -hmm. who has an MOU to mm -hmm. build an autonomous city mm -hmm. um, in Ghana, mm -hmm. who is raising a billion for mm -hmm. that project through wow. the coin. Wow. wow. So I'm going to introduce you directly. Mm -hmm. Now, he's already built two schools in Ghana. Um, oh, the last school that he built was a 500-student school. Wow. And it has a manufacturing plant next door mm -hmm. so that the school is self-sustaining from mm -hmm. the profits of the mm -hmm. manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a gentleman who made his first million at 23, very shrewd man, very humble, and definitely the kind of delivery partner that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And as we close the skills and knowledge gaps with partners of this ilk, I think very quickly oh. it would be, um, we would establish the infrastructures that we're talking about Mm. like tech and leadership colleges. Mm -hmm. So you have those who are technically proficient, mm -hmm. but in a leadership where you are also talking about the acumen of the person that mm -hmm. you're um, inducting into the school. Mm -hmm. These are the Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. These are, but with the virtuous lens mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. Africa and mm -hmm. Africans, mm -hmm. because just in even mentioning that man's name, we understand the beauty of the ground and the land, they just desire to have it with our Africans. Mm -hmm. We are Africans. Mm -hmm. We will not allow that to take place. Mm -hmm. So we are obligated to mm -hmm. deliver the infrastructures, mm -hmm. um, not only to educate us, mm -hmm. not only to create leadership, mm -hmm. but also to protect it mm -hmm. because we have to grow our security that's at true. the same rate that we grow our wealth and our influence. Absolutely. Because if you can't protect yourself, and that comes down to intelligence, it comes down to digital intelligence, intelligence mm -hmm. agency, and mm -hmm. also private security. Mm -hmm. Because the private security sector has been um, undervalued on the continent. Mm -hmm. When we look at what shadow government does in the United States mm -hmm. with organizations like Blackwater, mm -hmm. we understand that even our own governments aren't serving our interests necessarily. Mm -hmm. But the people, irrespective of the intentions of government mm -hmm. or the shortcomings of government, mm -hmm. must be protected mm -hmm. by a force mm -hmm. which is there to keep Africa for mm -hmm. Africans. That's right. That's right. That's right. A place that all black people call their home. That's what mm -hmm. we have to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If there's anyone, if, if anyone in the comment section who would like to ask questions, please put your questions in, and um, we can aim to answer your questions. Um, as I was saying, like before, in in the facts of um, in that okay, a lot of people have been asking how they're able to connect um, to the families if they wanted to, if they wanted to come there, what would be the procedures of doing so? Yeah, we are setting up the organization now that 
every and the website that everybody can go mm -hmm. and then um register then when you register all the provisions will be made in ghana which mm -hmm. i want all of us to do together Absolutely. All, all the provisions will be made in ghana or wherever Africa country you want to go. But actually, for us to control it, we want to start in Ghana, then gradually we expand it to other African countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then, you have that relationship with the kings and queens as well. Oh, so absolutely. That yeah. one. We and, and that is one of the, the, the things that we're trying to plan to do because it's kind of stopped us this year, but hopefully mm -hmm. next year, we're trying to bring all the kings and queens because they will be the, the, the portholes, even when it comes to the youth, they'll be the portholes <laughs> of where each country they're going to go to. So by the kings coming to the UK, because remember, the UK is the middle, the, the mother, the core part. So by putting you coming there, then people are able to galvanize and say, okay, I want to go to Ghana, I want to go to Nigeria, but they have a kingship that they can go to and say, you know what, this is what we want to do because That's right. you've got the teachers, we've got the engineers. It's Absolutely. About and if we're able to build, then we, we, we can make these things manifest, even in, in the fact of even doing the rites of passage for the kids. Mm -hmm. Because when they come over there and do their rites of passage, they're not only coming to help the people in the village, they're going to learn from the people of the village. Mm -hmm. and a better, more insight than what they see on telly because they're now going to see the reality of it. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. That's that true. Something that, something that we, we need to be able to do and to put that on ground. So um, in looking at that, um, Dean, in your forms of your, your, your um, CEO program, um, yeah. I want you to tell him about a little insight because you know, like as we transfer from the the, the man of the academy and we put them into the into these programs, um, I just wanted you to give him a kind of an insight because they're between the rites of passage, and then and at the same time we're going through your program. So I just want to give you a little insight. Yeah. Of your program. So um, this is another hat with my brother Nana Ajiman. Mm -hmm. which is Access UK, who deliver our employment training and positioning for our young people specifically. Mm -hmm. So we've got a program called Road CEO, mm -hmm. which we're building an app, which is hundreds of hours of successful African diaspora and um, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. giving you compartmentalized every area of business acumen expertise. Mm -hmm. We all know that YouTube is the greatest university on earth, Mm -hmm. But you have to eat the chicken and spit out the bones. Mm -hmm. Who knows what is bone when you're a young man? You might get a bone stuck in your throat. That's so true. this is all chicken breast, the whole thing. So it might be um, personnel management, marketing, digital marketing, accounting, negotiation skills, the soft transferable skills as well, problem solving just um, in being able to identify how to leverage situations. So all of those areas of um, business acumen delivered in one app with hundreds of hours of video, but then also in the classroom situation where you get the one-to-one -one and the... It's gone again. <laughs> group that... Um, investors can be quite confident to put their money into. Now, if we're delivering this as a culture within um, an entrepreneurial curriculum, mm. and we... Mm. So... Being your cutting out once again. Dean, can you hear me? Okay. So while while we're waiting on Dean for a little bit, um, please press that like, share button, share this information amongst your family, your friends, and so ever, so that we can get this information out as soon as possible because it's something that we are trying to create and to build. Because as you know, this is the UK, USA, 
Ghana link up. So we need to open up the doors and able to build from this into making this a reality. We have to make this thing manifest to its real truth. By us doing so, it's getting us as far as possible. Um, there was a question um, asked, um, how might one get involved in the business community? Is there a chamber of commas and an equivalence? Dean, could you answer that? Well, absolutely. What I will, what we have in APAC is a trade and industry department headed by Yvonne Witter. So what we're quite happy to do in the absence of any infrastructures that are in place on the ground in Ghana and working with the king, we're quite happy to... Oops. Oh. <laughs> it's one of them days... The internet is, is, is refusing for us to get the information out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they, know, they know where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, he's back. Hold on, just let it look in. And he's back. Okay. Yes, Dean, you're back. My connect. this is murder. <laughs> and, you know, the <laughs> I, 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 security forces up with me. So, yeah, with hook hook. What, what um, our back end will do is offer the king any um, web developing services to. Okay. Mm. It's one of them days. Uh, yeah, we rely on the internet so much. Uh -huh. Dean. Dean is hold he's freezing once again. Please share, like, and subscribe. Please, please press this like button um, as much as possible because we need to get this word out as we wait again for Dean. But I was just going to ask, in, in forms of the, the kids of the village and what kind of things of, if people, there's some people that may want to volunteer and come to Ghana. Yeah. Um, what kind of things can you say they, they could do when they want to go out there? Okay. Um, you know what? Let me correct this concept. Uh -huh. let's, not, let's not use village for Africa. Yes. Af Africa is developed. And when the Europeans fight their tribal wars, they call it world war. Uh -huh. When we deal, we call it tribes and we call it, <laughs> we call it villages. <laughs> 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 you know? So let, let, let us promote the Africa the way we want it to be. All right? So, exactly. yeah, there, there are great royal monarchies before the Europeans came. So le let's promote it. Our kingships have been dropped to chiefs. They give us name to demonize our positions and our royalties. Whilst in actual fact, all those things, they came to study from us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they came to study all these things from us. So in a nutshell, <laughs> uh, Dean, you were saying something, finish, then we, we go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Dean? Uh, it's not, oh, he's not in. He's not in. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. actually, uh, Terry, um, oh, mm -hmm. as, a, as a matter of fact, um, I'm, I'm trying to create a chamber of commerce in mm -hmm. Ghana now that will use that as a conduit to the people. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to create a chamber of commerce now in Ghana mm -hmm. that we can use it as a conduit. We have it as a conduit. We have it. Yeah. So that uh, we can, we yeah, it. we can, yeah. It's almost, it's, it's in the form formative stages. And I mean, the COVID-19 disturbed us a little bit. It should have been moving now. So 
um, we can connect that to Dean's um, organization, then we can deliver to the and people. And also, U.S. African Chambers of Commerce. So That's right. You see, the key is that we link this internationally because the mandate is to increase the intra-African trade, which currently, annually, intra-African trade lies at 18%, which is the most ridiculous figure, considering that we shouldn't have any precursors between us. However, we do understand that the various banking laws and regulations of the SWIFT system, things about transactions and transparency, which is why we want to deliver out our own sovereign platforms so that we don't need to ask the other people's permission about how we do trade as they come in and take that other 82% is quite ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That other nations can come and take 82% of trade and leave us with 18% of trade. It makes no sense. Makes so sense. now what we try to do is create the blue ocean space utilizing technology and laying down systems and also cultural practices which just secludes and precludes anybody else entering the picture to create that blue ocean space. What we want to deliver via blockchain technology is the Uber of increasing intra-African trade. Remember, Uber didn't buy any stock whatsoever. They just built a spectacular backend. And that is exactly what we're bringing to deliver so that we can connect the most successful African diasporans on the planet, so that we're using singular vehicles that protect us, create our economic and communication security, and increase our ability to trade amongst ourselves. When we do that, we're not going to lose um, an Idris who worked for Google and um, Facebook in creating certain AI for them that should have been created for Africa. Mm -hmm. Is that that um, it took for a gentleman like Nipsey Hussle to get hold of him before we even realized that this man may have made it all the way from Ghana to LA to put all these things in place for Twitter, Facebook, and Google, and we didn't even know that he existed. There are many Idrises that we have in the world because the brain drain has gone the wrong way. That's true. It is time to bring it back home oh. to our own platform. But in who we've been amassing um, and creating the refining process as well. So at this stage, I'm very comfortable four years into our journey that we have the correct personnel. Now, I'm not just talking about their technical proficiency, but also the lens that they have and their intention and the pureness of that intention as Pan-Africanists. That's right. This is what we're dealing with at That's the right. to build up what we're talking about. Because as much as people might say, oh, you're a businessman, I'm not um, a capitalist. Mm -hmm. The free market has always existed. Mm -hmm. We've always traded every shells mm -hmm. for goods, services, clothes, and food. However, that wasn't about exploitation. It was about having a commodity to actually trade and understand that there is a means and measurement of trade and exchange. So the free market has already always existed. What we want to do is create an African free market, market. that is democratic, that anybody with the acumen and capability to make money shouldn't be precluded from that marketplace by any permission mm. of Europeans or any other bureaucrat, mm. but be able to jump straight into that marketplace and trade freely, which is the nature of a free market. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm. Yeah. So any tools that, um, you don't have, sir, we are happy to speak with our technical teams and build those out and right. start the relationship. With you. Very happy. Okay, may I, may I ask a question? Dean, this is your question. Yes. Is there a way we can form the UK or the European Union, US, Africa, Chamber of Commerce, registered in Ghana? Absolutely. Okay. It's, 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 an, it's an offline conversation, but the answer is as simple as absolutely. All right. Okay, so I'll start working. And we on have all of the delivery partners in place. I'll, I'll, I'll start working on that to put a headquarters in Ghana for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, and um, then even down to the bricks and mortar, 
-hmm. of creating the most to create in um, a standalone building which is self-sufficient off-grid mm -hmm. um, one of our partners is uh, a chartered surveyor mm -hmm. who has been working on the most technologically advanced processes mm -hmm. to create self-sustaining and clean buildings so from a to z we will introduce you to delivery partners all right so with the question in place now what organizations in the u.s will be recommended to facilitate communication in ghana so the answer is we are will create the chamber of commerce so that will facilitate uh, business in ghana okay so immediately we we have a coin we have a relationship with the African-American Chambers of Commerce, which represents over a million businesses. Mm -hmm. So you understand just in terms of um, supply from Ghana mm -hmm. and being able to create manufacturing districts, we can replace exactly what China has done. That's right. And even in Britain, because Britain and Ghana have this new trade relationship where there are zero tariffs on import and export, is such a beautiful relationship now that anywhere in Africa, Ghana becomes the conduit to deliver that. That's right. Africa is letting down borders mm -hmm. so that the um, nature of Ghana becomes a very central and necessary country, even to deal with Britain, which is a conduit to Europe. Oh. So we're dealing with some very powerful, powerful concepts Great. in us all coming together Great. and delivering out that Chambers of Commerce for Ghana. All right. Uh, Mr. Smith is asking a question, and um, Dean, that's your terrain. <laughs> Can we set up something to send money to villages? Absolutely. So the wallet that is in the stable of same coin, effectively, is just like sending a text and receiving cash. So the same way you would through PayPal or in... Mm. Anybody else? and they become a key oh, no. he remit where there are no more permission he's, he's going again because directly to the continent so now we are our own masters of the universe in being able to circumvent Europeans and the borders that they've created between us and the challenges they've created between us in that we now deal face to face and have the technology to deliver it out. Okay. All right. Um, what question? There was another question. Um, what is it? Da, 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 da. I'm close to I'm in the conversation. Loving that. If there's any more questions that you would like to ask, you know, as we are coming close to the end of the show, please ask them as much as possible. Um, if there's um, something you would like to say, King, and if there's something else that you would like to say, Dean, um, yes, please say so while we have the opportunity of the general public listening in. And then you know, they, they Please, might say like some, some powerful, powerful words from the both of you, you know, so we can keep this and keep this growing as much as possible. So please press the like, share and subscribe, share amongst your family, your friends and everybody, because this is powerful and this is something that is really needed while we're in this pandemic that we're in at the moment. So we need to able to contact and interact as the one thing I've always learned is spirituality is communication. The more we communicate, the more we are connected as becoming one people. So yeah. doing so, um, is there any questions? There will be a physical meeting. Yes, there will be a physical meeting, but this will be, probably planning towards next year because you know as they're trying to keep us in as much as possible for the rest of the year 
you know. But as soon as the, the doors open, the planes fly in, there will be something that will be put together to able to make in this manifest. Because we're not just talking, we're, just, we're doing the work behind the scenes. So we need every single African diasporan and African people on land to put in the work. Join up, whatever organisation you feel that you can, you can work towards, make sure you go to it, make you invest in it, and let's collaborate as one, not a singular. So, Absolutely. King, King, if there's something you would like to say to the people, what would it be? <laughs> yeah, first I give thanks to the Creator and the ancestors for mm -hmm. making this possible. Because the ancestors are waiting for us and they've set up the resources for us spiritually, for us to operate. And we are just vehicles that they are using. And um, I always tell people that God will give you 95%, but the 5% is your responsibility to act. And if you don't act, then in our circumstance, posterity will never forgive us. You mm -hmm. see, I tell every black person that you are the power now because they've put, you, they've put us in a situation that will act to change the course of civilization. So if we stay mm -hmm. stagnant and we don't change the course of civilization, posterity will never forgive us. So People listening, listening to us now, I'll tell you, any resources and any power or anything you have, material, mental, whatever it is, put it into this so that we'll change the Africa. So we black people in America, as they call, they call, us, they call us African-Americans, we'll tell them we have a home to go. This is not just your home. We in the UK will have a home to, to always go. Africans in the Caribbean, wherever it is, you have a home to go. So I tell you, let's put our resources together. And with the yes. blessing of the Creator and our ancestors, it will be possible. Africa must unite. Okay. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. <laughs> Absolutely, I can go. <laughs> So in closing, um, first, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Riggs and Black Eyes TV for hosting us, uh, to his majesty and definitely our ancestors for presenting this unique opportunity to bring us all together. Um, as soon as we are out of COVID-19 restrictions, we will be putting the economic African diaspora season together at the London School of Economics. And we will definitely host his majesty um, on the platform with economists as well to talk about, to galvanize. And what we would do is invite down 10 African student unions and provide that as a live cast in That's HD. Right. Great. Um, so we, we've already created that format. We already have the relationship. We already have the use of the biggest lecture hall. Um, and then it would just be a case of us expediting the process. What we will also do is offer all of our technical expertise across the various aspects of um, ADPAC, including health and some doctors, even down to the mobile hospital units, which are like £140,000, which is a lorry, a juggernaut lorry, which has an operating theatre and a waiting room for six seats because they can go into the rural areas for delivery including delivering sanitized operations. So none of these things are as expensive as we think. So in all ways, we are now delivery partners. When we speak offline, we are going to um, assist you with everything you need. How that plays out for the viewers is that we now have a direct conduit from the United Kingdom to straight to Ghana. And what we are all interested in is about returning. And we have to say it out loud, without being knocked. So we're all scared about our economic security and we want to know if we're purchasing land, we're purchasing land once. So we have the, recogn we have the recommended um, legal expertise to work on the other side. And as we have a singular union to create that process, we know that on this side, you have the correct personnel. On the opposite side, you have the correct personnel. There's full transparency in all of the vehicles even through the coin, we actually have an escort 
where you don't have to hand off money to anybody. It's held in stasis, just like any bank in escrow, so that through the blockchain, it has to be signed off on both ends. So nobody can actually run off with money. So we create the full security that our people deserve and desire on the ground in returning from the cold to the continent. And we can't wait to start getting this delivered out. So ADPAC is looking forward. Access UK is looking forward. Um, my brother Nana was in Ghana three months ago. And I know his mind was awash with ideas to deliver educationally and in terms of employment. So that is the conduit vehicle Access UK between industry and education to deliver out the sustainable um, employment opportunities, which largely will lie in the digital domain. Okay. Okay. So, King, uh, before I even forget, you know, I always ask our elders, our kingships, our queens to be a body for one of our academies. And we're yes. asking you, as I've presented it to you before, would you accept to be in one of our bodies for the Manhood and Womanhood Academy and to able for us to able to establish it in Ghana as well as in the UK and in America? Would you accept? I do. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and I'm well appreciated for you to be one of our biggest ambassadors and father to our academy. Okay. okay. So, people, I want you to share, love, and like this, this video. Make sure you get it to your family, get it to the children, because this is archives. This is a legacy. Because for us to even get us on at this opportunity to able to provide in something and us being at home to able to receive in this, this is something very powerful. It's something we can never forget. This is the beginning of a foundation before we move forward to where we need to be. So we have this legacy. And you can always say, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? As I was saying to the king, just stay there before we, so we can speak after the show. As you know, people, we need to talk business behind the scenes because not true. everything will be on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you, family. Keep on sharing, keep on subscribing, and keep on liking. Tomorrow, we've got a special guest. Wednesday, we've got one of our elders from the United States called Brother Kaba. Tomorrow and um, Thursday, we've got music and entertainment for you, so you can have a little bit of relaxing and entertained by music. Friday, we have a special guest for the Manhood Academy. And then on Sunday, we have the Woman's Session, which we call the International Sisters Circle. So please subscribe, share it around, and pay, pay attention to what is being given. Peace, love, and harmony. Stay black. Live black. See black. Deliver black. Shop black. And you <laughs> shall succeed in your life. <laughs> so family, peace and blessings. And we are out. Beautiful, sir. <laughs>